Hey folks, how's it going? Today we're going to be looking at a really quick example of how you can connect OSC data coming from Touch Designer and plugging it right into Max MSP. And here I've got the trial version of Max 8 that I've been playing around with. So let's dive into this. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and delete everything here. And we're going to start on the Touch Designer side of things and then we're going to move over to the Max side of things. So inside of Touch Designer, I'm going to go ahead and put an LFO chop in here and that's just going to give me a nice sample signal that I can use. I'm also going to create a slider comp and this slider comp is just going to be representative of some other kind of input that you could have. Maybe you have a user interface in Touch Designer that you want to control some generative audio for. Maybe you have some more generative signals in Touch Designer that are going to be controlling things like synths or VSTs or anything like that. Whatever the case may be, these two give us a good starting place for sample data. So I'm going to create a merge chop just to bring those two channels together. And then I'm going to plug those into an OSC out chop. Now the thing to remember about OSC, which is a little bit tricky when you're just getting started and all the different network protocols have their own little ways of handling things. But OSC on the sending side needs to define the network address and the port. So in this case, our network address, because we're working on the same computer, is going to be localhost, which is the equivalent of 127.0.0.1, if you've ever seen that before. But if you are working between two machines, like maybe you have one machine just in charge of audio and you have one machine just in charge of visuals, on the sender side, you would put the IP address of that other computer. So in this case, I'm just going to set this back to localhost. And then I'm going to set the port to be 8000. The port really can be whatever number you want it to be. In this case, 8000 is a nice, easy number to use. So the last thing I would do is switch this data format here from time slice over to sample. Now, if you're going between two different touch designer systems, the time slice system is slightly better overall. But when we're talking between things like touch designer and max MSP or touch designer and unreal and unity for those kind of things, I always recommend setting it to sample, which is just going to send the current sample value across that pipeline. So now we can go over into max and start getting into receiving our data. Now, if you've never used Max before, it's an incredible environment for doing a lot of real-time audio stuff, as well as a lot of really interesting ways of approaching data processing, and they even have Jitter, which is kind of a visual environment. So to get started, what we're going to do is hit N on the keyboard, and that's going to give us a new node box here that we can type into. And what we're going to do is type UDP receive, and you can see it auto fills nicely for you. And then we're going to put a space to put our first set of arguments. So in this case, the first argument that we're going to put, we can see here is port, which is an integer and it's required. Now, in this case, we know our port is 8000. So I can just put 8000 and hit enter. Now, if only this was all we needed, that would be very good. But there's a couple more steps that we need to do. So the first thing I recommend doing is going over to file and opening up this show package manager button here. Now, this is a really great thing that Max has, which a lot of the externals that people are making are actually available and easy to download and install right from within their package manager. And what we're going to do is search here for something called ODOT, O-D-O-T. And this is made by CNMAT, and they're a great school that has really been developing a lot of Max externals. You know, anyone who's used Max in the last bunch of years, you've definitely used the CNMAT's external library kit. And the O.Kit is kind of the successor of a lot of the OSC parts of that. So we're going to go ahead and click on this. And then here I already have it installed, but if not, it would show a little install button here and you'd click that and it would automatically grab all of their components and bring them into your Max environment. Now, once you're done installing the O.Kit, what we're going to do is first append one more argument onto this UDP receive. So in most cases, when you're working with UDP messages coming into Max, a lot of the time they will not have their full packet specification, especially if OSC messages are coming in, because there's a lot more information in an OSC message. So what we can do is the UDP receive actually can take a third argument that tells it, hey, you know what? 
I'm going to be working with the CNMAT kind of externals library. Just send me all the data. Don't pre-process anything for me. So what we can do is double click on this UDP receive. After the 8,000, put another space and type in CNMAT. So that's just like a nice, nice little behind the scenes thing. You've probably seen this UDP receive 8,000 CNMAT in a lot of examples, but in case you didn't know what that CNMAT did, it basically just sends the full packet specification down the pipeline for you. So now essentially this UDP receive is receiving our OSC messages. Cause if you remember OSC is a format and specification for the data itself, but the kind of wire and pipe that it travels through is just a UDP kind of network protocol. So once we have this in here to start parsing, it is actually really, really easy. We can hit N one more time to get a new node and we can type in O dot, and that's going to give us all of the kind of nodes inside of that O dot library. And you can see where the name comes from O dot. And we're going to use this O dot route, which is a really great way of taking all of the OSC messages into our max patch and then kind of distributing them down their own signal paths based on what their channel names are. So in this case, I can say O route, put a space, and now I can just start putting as many different channels as I want different outputs from this O route. So for example, I have two channels right here. I have Chan1 and V1. So I'm going to put those names inside of this OSC route. But remember, all OSC messages start with a forward slash, kind of like URLs. So in this case, I would say forward slash Chan1 is one of the routes that I want to create. Then I'm going to put a space and say forward slash V1. Then when I hit enter, I'm going to see that I have three outputs on the bottom of my node here. So first I'll go ahead and connect my UDP receive into my O dot route. And then what I can even do just as an example is hit the letter M. That's going to give me a message box here. And I can grab the output of the first little output here, which is as we can see when we highlight over it, any data coming in that matches that forward slash Chan one. And I can plug it into the right side top input of my message box. So now we can see this message box is basically receiving only the LFO's data. And I have a separate output here that matches the data coming from this V1 channel. So similarly, I can hit M on my keyboard and connect the output of that O route to the top right input of my message box. And then if I move my slider, we can see that data getting updated in that message box. So that's great. That's really kind of the fundamental nuts and bolts of getting OSC data across from Touch Designer into Max MSP. It's another one of the reasons why so many people love OSC because it's really easy to set up and get different applications talking to each other. Now, once you have this data inside of Max MSP, it's really easy to kind of scale and manipulate and do whatever you like with it. For example, if I hit S on my keyboard and make two sliders, I could take control of these sliders by connecting these data points to them. But first, one thing to know about Max MSP is by default, these sliders have a range of zero to 127. So we can even go ahead and do a really simple scaling process here. So I'm gonna hit N on my keyboard to get a new node. I'm gonna type scale, hit space, and I can even see the order and the type of arguments I need, which is a fun part about using Max MSP. It's really intuitive and easy to get into. So in this case, I know that my incoming value range for my LFO we can see here is from negative one to positive one. So what I would do is type negative one and I would make sure to put a dot. That way, Max knows that this is a float value that I'm working with. So I'm going from negative one to positive one, so one dot. And now I wanna rearrange this to zero to 127. Then I can hit enter, connect the output of my O route to that, and then connect that to my slider. And now we can see that LFO is controlling this slider inside of Max. You could replace that slider with anything, whether it's a VST, some kind of audio processing you're doing, or even some kind of video processing you might be doing inside of Max with Jitter. So now very similarly, if I wanted to take my slider here and kind of map it to this slider, I could hit N, create another scale. In this case, I know my slider is going from zero to one. So I could do zero dot space one dot, 
And then I know I need this to stretch into a range of zero to 127. So now I can connect the output of that route to my scale, then connect the output of that to my slider. And now I'm dynamically controlling a slider manually inside of Max from a slider and touch designer. And I have my generative kind of LFO here doing its fun thing, controlling a slider inside of Max. So that's really all there is to the basics of kind of making this connection between touch designer and Max. I've been using both these softwares for a long time and I've been excited to kind of test around with Max 8 and see kind of the new features in it. I'd definitely dive into it and give it a shot because there's so much fun audio work that you could do inside of Max. And now with a little bit of OSC, it's easy to control from touch designer. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.